Hi there, I'm Black Bright and today I decided to talk about the racism in football. What do I know about football? Well, my grandson is an Arsenal supporter. Most of the people around me are Arsenal supporter. That's about all I know and I know that football's in season at the moment. But about racism in football, you know, I was watching um, the news this morning and they're doing this um, the Football Association have got this thing called Enough, hashtag Enough. And they're prepared to do 24 hours boycott of footballers. 24 hours ain't going to cut it. The thing is, is that with football, it's all about the money. Football is a multi-billion um, business. And unless you're prepared to sacrifice your lifestyle and the money, it's not going to change. You've got to hit people where it hurts. It's no point doing 24 hours. You need to be doing a season. Now, I've got the names of the people who have been racially abused. We have Antonio Rudiger. We have Ashley Young. We have Pierre Emmerich. We have Raheem Sterling. We have Danny Rose. We have Callum Hudson Odious. And goodness knows how many more that we don't know about. And the thing is, is that on the one hand, they're saying, oh, yeah, we're doing it for our fans. We've got to go out there on the pitch for our fans. But why would you do that? You're really doing it for the money. You're not prepared to sacrifice your lifestyle. That's the way I see it. That's my opinion. You know, if you are willing to go on a pitch and have people hurl banana skins and racial abuse and still play on regardless, what does that say about you? It says that you are nothing more than a masquerade. You're just something like, you know, um, you know, like in the olden days, they had that big arena where people used to fight and you have the you had all the people um, around looking and getting involved and screaming, kill them, kill them. You know, that's what it's like. It's entertainment. And you're prepared to put your dignity and your pride on the line and be called all manner of things from monkeys to goodness knows what to get a buck you're selling yourself short you're selling yourself out and it's difficult I can understand how difficult it is you're used to that lifestyle you're used to the limelight you're used to the high profiling you're used to the money and you don't want to give that up so if you don't want to give it up, keep your mouth shut and swallow. That's the way I see it. Because I don't see no point in making a fuss and saying you're going to go on a 24-hour boycott. Kaepernick, he lost his job. He kneeled down and he did it for a cause against Bruce brutality. And he lost his job. And he lost a hell of a lot. But he's up there again. But the fact of the matter is he was prepared to do that. How many British, um, black British footballers are prepared to do that? I've heard it time and time again. White, fo white football fans do not want to see black people winning goals for them. They don't want to see black people in their football teams. They want white people for Britain. And, you know, it, it's fine. Yes, you're British. But it just shows you about the divide. You're British, but you're not English. And the thing is, is that until you understand that Britain doesn't mean what black and white and mixed and all these races, for these nationalists and these far rights, Britain and England means white. And so when you're going on there and you're saying you're doing it for Britain and you're doing it for your British fans, a lot of people, especially footballers, you know, because they're working class and a lot of them are right wing. So... There are a lot of them are not doing well, they're doing it for the entertainment, but a lot of them, they love football. And the way um, it seems to be overrun now with black people, I think when they had the little odd one, it wasn't too bad. I think they was able to tolerate that. But now it's like you've nearly got a whole team. It's like 75 percent, 5 percent of the team is black and they don't like it. And now it's coming out. For some reason, racism is coming to the fore more recently. More recently than ever before, it's coming out in the open. All those dormant, um, all those dormant racist sentiments which were there all the time, 
all of a sudden they seem to be resurfacing and I don't know what's doing it. I don't know if it's the Farage campaign. I don't know what it is, but it's I'm noticing it more and more. And some, there's something that's the driver of that. But all I'm saying is that it's fine, you know, black footballers, do your thing. But don't come bawling and saying, oh, you know, they're discriminating, they're being racist. And you know you have the power. Without you, remember, you have the power. You're 75% of the bloody football team. You can, you can have it crash down if you are prepared to make the sacrifice. Are you prepared to make the sacrifice? I don't think many of them are. I think they've got the gift of the gab and they're all about that, but they ain't got no balls. They've got the balls that they throw on the pitch and that's about it. Anyway, I've had my little rant and I don't think I've missed out anything. Nah, I didn't need to because it's all in here and in here. I don't need it on here. Ciao for now.